Yeah, and you know, it's all about having fun in the water, but you can't have fun if you're not thinking about your safety. So we're hanging out with some young lifeguards in training. Up next on BT. A lifeguard and that's in fact what these young lifeguards in training are hoping to be at some point but first off you know there's a big concern right now over the quality of the water in the various beaches what do we need to know specifically about even Kitts Beach here so before we um, ever bring the kids into the ocean we want to make sure that the water is safe so what we do is we go to the Vancouver Coastal Health um, website and there's a beach water quality report there. Okay, so for this so one here in, in particular. looking at it right now, it says that the coliform count, which is the amount of um, bacteria in the water, is at 23 is parts per million, and we close at 200. So, so right now it's lots of uh, yeah, opportunity to go in the water. Perfectly safe down to the beach. Awesome. And viewers and can check that themselves on the Coastal Health website. Perfect, and even safer because we have our young lifeguards in training. What exactly are they doing right now? That's right. Right now we have a fitness game going on where we're training the kids um, some beach sprints. We're working on communication and the leaders um, starting the kids off for yep. their races. And we're just having fun. We find that in a lot of these junior lifeguard courses, the big fo it's a lot of pressure on the kids about passing or failing. And we try to make these camps as centered around just having a good time. Which and is, I think, a lesson a lot of parents can... Totally, you want to have fun, but the communication is, is huge. So for anyone that's going out with their kids to the beach or, of course, a pool, such as Kit's Pool, uh, what do they need to really know and be able to communicate with their kids? Some good things are having a plan if you get separated. Um, some of the skills we teach the kids are how to deal with lost people. So say, um, you know, you get separated from your kid, have a place to meet them, have a phone number to call, make sure your kid knows your phone number or your address so that they can come back home if they get misplaced. Lots of great safety tips. And by the way, if you have any questions about the programs that they have here with the Vancouver uh, Lifeguards, you can check out their website. But we got lots more with the Junior Lifeguards coming up uh, later there, Jody and Riaz. Yeah, we're so lucky because most of our beaches have lifeguards, which makes it a better experience for people that are coming to the beaches. You've got this great camp that's happening for lifeguards and training, uh, average age group of the kids. We've got 9 to 15 year olds out here, um, either before or after they've done, done their bronze medallion courses. Okay, excellent. Now, what do we have the uh, students, the junior lifeguards doing right now? So right now we have them out there doing a paddleboard race event. Um, the beach lifeguards use paddleboards as one of their rescue tools. So they're getting uh, proficient on the equipment, having fun, and practicing some of the skills. Because that's what they would use to rescue somebody. But if someone is at the beach or, you know, really anywhere for themselves, what do people need to know as far as bringing their own kind of rescue tool? I would say that parents should always have something on hand just in case something goes wrong. Um, so something that's, you know, that they can throw out. Yeah, have a them. flotation device, have right. something ready, and just be aware that in an emergency situation, they might not be able to rescue their kid without an aid. Okay, now we deal with something like, obviously, we're here at Kitts Beach, which also has a pool. The pool offers its own set of uh, different challenges. What do people seem to forget about when they go to the beach? Well, down at the ocean, swimming's kind of a completely different ball game because you have temperatures that are different. You have um, different visibility. You can't see the bottom. I remember the first time I did open water swimming, I couldn't catch my breath because of how cold it was on my face. And you might be a great swimmer in the pool, different, whole different exactly. animal out I'd here, done right? Exactly, I my whole life and I jumped in the ocean. It took some practice for me to get used to that ocean swimming. So the conditioning is certainly different. So we want to keep everyone safe this summer. Again, for more details on the programs they offer, you can check out their website. But we're going to talk first aid, Michelle, coming up in the next segment. You know, we just want to have fun in the water, but you know, in the off chance that someone does get hurt, we're going to find out what some of the biggest risks are at the beach, some of the biggest thing that the lifeguards see as far as needing to treat. So we're talking first aid up next. We're talking everything from bleeding to choking. How do you handle that? Stay with us. Yeah, you know, we don't want anyone to get hurt. We want the water and being at the beach to be a ton of fun, uh, James. But there are injuries that can happen. What's most common uh, what you see as a lifeguard? We see a lot of um, bike crashes on the seawall. That's a common one. So bleeding, um, people choking when they're eating their hot dogs on the beach. Um, lots of that kind of stuff, which is what we're training the kids to do today. And this is something that really I think that most people should be able to do basic things. Thanks very much, James. Mm -hmm. Let's make our way here to Chelsea. Okay, Chelsea, first of all, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. What's your name? Kiara. Awesome. Hey, what are you going to show us here right now? I'm going to show you how to do an abdominal thrust, which is basically just taking whatever's in the person to come out and pull it. Get, Get out. out. Right. <laughs> And how you do it is, first of all, you would find your belly button, which is, I'm guessing, right here, because I can feel it. <laughs> and then you would put your hand with a fist and, like, a uh, hand like that. And five things, and it looks like a J. Four, five. And then after that, you'd go to the side, 
bend over and do five little thing like back blows and then you keep going until it either comes out or the ambulance is right here next to her and says stop. Great information. Thank you very much, Chelsea, and I'm glad we got rid of that hot dog. Okay, let's make our way over here. Jensen, of course, we heard earlier from James that bleeding can sometimes happen if someone gets, you know, in a, in a bicycle crash or, or something or scrapes their knee. How are we going to treat the bleeding? Okay, first you're going to take a gauze and you're going to put them, put it on wherever it's bleeding. You're going to ask them to apply pressure. Then you're going to take this pad thing that's a bit thicker if it's bleeding really heavily and you'll put that on top too and ask them to apply pressure to that and then you have this folded wrap bandage and you'll wonderful great job i'm going to let you continue to stop the bleeding there for more details of course on the junior lifeguard camp you can check out the website for complete scheduling jody and rias but lots of important information for fun in the sun on the beach here in vancouver Hey, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, we're here at Kitts Pool where we've been hanging out with uh, lifeguards in training. We've now gotten into what you would appear to be a more controlled situation, but you still need to know those life-saving techniques, and we've got what you need to know up next. We'll be right back. Yeah, and one of the ways to have the most amount of fun is to know that everyone is safe because it's about combining those two things, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got obviously some lifeguards in training and now we're kind of run through a, a life-saving thing. Now, first of all, how do you know if someone's drowning? I mean, we all think it's this flailing about. Yeah, drowning can take a lot of different forms. You see with the kids out here, some of them are doing really, keep drowning, guys. Some of them <laughs> are doing really big <laughs> actions. Some of them are thrashing a little bit more and others are um, a little bit more subtle, but all of them are being completely silent because they're just trying to breathe. Okay, so it's good to know that it doesn't always look the same. All right, let's run okay, through rescuers. a more professional one. Ready, set, go. So what are they doing? So right now we're doing a drill that's very similar to how a lifeguard would actually rescue someone. Um, we're helping them practice this so that in preparation for becoming lifeguards. But in real life, in a real beach scenario, um, the kids wouldn't just jump in so quickly. They would right. go through a series of steps to keep them safer. And some of our junior lifeguards are going to tell us about those okay. steps. Um, the first step is throwing, is talking, where you just sort of talk them out of the water, just trying to tell them to kick. And the second one is throwing something in so they can hold on to and kick in. Perfect. A little bit more dangerous, we have... Uh, the second one is reaching out and having an object between them, between you and the victim to pull them in. And then um, that's what's a little bit more dangerous is also um, going in the water like waist deep and taking them out. And that's pretty dangerous because you could put yourself at risk, right? Yeah. All right. And what they're doing in the pool is towing. And so there's an object in between um, the victim drowning and you, but you're not holding on to them. And then That's right, so by that point, you've yeah. already gone in the water with a rowboat or a paddleboard, perhaps, and if that doesn't work or you can't find one, you'd have to swim out, and then you would tow. Yeah. And if you couldn't tow, then you would have to? Then you'd have to swim to them and actually hold on to the uh, victim and drag them and uh, drag them out of the water. Sounds like you have to have some pretty good conditioning to be able to do that with lifeguards. You've and got to build up your strength. And a lot of judgment as well. It's, yeah. So judgment and leadership's a big thing that we try to focus on. Yeah, so what's been your favorite thing in Beach Alert? Uh, my favorite thing in Beach Alert would have to be paddle boarding, and I like going out there and really just feeling what it would be like to be a lifeguard. And of course, if people just joined us now, the paddle boarding, it's not the sport of paddle boarding, it's using the paddle board for the rescue. Yeah, that's right, and just having fun in the water. Like at the KYC back there, the Kits Yacht Club, there's lots of ways to get out, be safe and have fun around the water in a way that won't put you or others in danger. Sounds good. I say we throw Nelson Wong into the pool. I'm sure you know how to <laughs> swim, right, Nelson? Uh, lots of fun here today at Kitts Beach, guys.